Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an oscilloscope, a good old two channel analog oscilloscope from Kikusoi. Difficult to say. I mean, I always need to practice a little bit. Oh my gosh, the type number is COS 5060A. So it's a 60 megahertz oscilloscope with delay timed uh, triggers. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot uh, to say about that. Yeah, we got all the normal fancy smancy stuff about all that delay stuff. So that means we got, yes, two time bases. And I think I will explain a lot more to that once I get this thing up and running, if I am that lucky. But the fun thing is that this is the main time base. And then when you, see, that means you cannot make the delay time based slower than the main time base. And this is handled mechanically. Pretty smart, huh? And this is actually a very normal solution for that problem. But there is a little node on this one. And it says 12 volt supply defect. So yes, I have to open and see what happens. This is the little before clip, how the unit looked when it arrived to my lab. And this is also the little before video start clip. So you can see how it looks here yeah, before I kind of cleaned it up. I really like to uh, clean up stuff before I make videos so you can see how nice and fine stuff is. But this is just how it arrives. After I've been doing a little bit of research, finding the schematics, finding service manuals and all that kind of stuff, because I wanted to find the power supply and I wanted to find the 12 volts and all that kind of stuff. So I can prepare myself because of this little missing uh, 12 volt node. But I also realized uh, something else that <laughs> is a little bit funny. How didn't I not see this at the first view? I mean, did I call this a two-channel oscilloscope. Maybe I did, but look what we got. This is channel one. This is channel two, but this is channel three. Well, I don't know if I want to call this a real three-channel oscilloscope because the idea with channel three is you can trick on it, but you can actually also turn it on. You can view your trigger view. So it's a supposed to be an external trigger input, yeah, but you can view it. Isn't that cool? So yes, you can see three channels at the same time. And there's even a um, potentiometer at the back that is called channel three position because we got no more space at the front for all the position knobs here, right? There's one more on the back of the unit. I really hope I'm going to get something on this so I can show you all this. So that will be the main board for time base triggering and all that kind of stuff. As you can see here, it's completely connected with time base switches and all that kind of stuff. There's uh, not that much to say about it. It's full of ICs. It's quite digitally done. And uh, here we go. I can see some service was done to this unit that one is now in a socket and it is from i don't know i can't remember was it 80 f something so the that ic was changed and we added uh, somebody added it into nice sockets here on the time base and uh can you see what that is this long thick cable see it goes all the way around and then it ends into the vertical deflection amplifier down there. So this is, of course, the delay line for vertical deflection. That is nice. And this means we will be able to see the leading edge of that signal we are triggering on. And this is essential because this is a quite fast scope, but we got dual time bases and all that kind of stuff. So yes, definitely we need a um, delay line. 
down here we see um, power supplies. And this is also where I expect to find my little problem. It's probably that one there with the little heatsink on it. That is the 12 volt. And we got some op amps down here. Those op amps in the absolutely blurry, blurry picture down there. That will be the op amps for the negative 5 volt, uh, 12 volt and the positive 12 volt. And we also got a little transistor for each of these. And if it is truly so, about the missing 12 volt, I think I should be able to, tra to uh, trace that down quite fast. And that is, of course, the channel 1 and 2 analog input. Not a lot to say about that. It's quite uh, classic. They call this the A2 board. And uh, what I've done so far is I found the schematics and all that kind of stuff. We've got the high voltage here. And this scope is running on 10,000 volts anode. So quite a lot of uh, high voltage going on here. And then uh, minus 1750 volts on the cathode system. So yeah, you don't want to touch anything in this area here. So uh, I definitely want to be uh, careful about that. Uh, the, the, high, the super high voltage is of course inside a shielded cable. It's, they, they try to hide this quite well. So you can't easily touch that. But you can easily touch the the minus 1700 and it's also um, those voltages that goes to intensity and focus and all that stuff here. So definitely a no touch zone right here. And it's quite easy to touch this when you're poking around with the with a scope like this. And this is obviously mains input and that is uh, nicely protected. So yeah, it should be it should be fine. This connector here is called P22. And if I look at the schematic for the power supply, I will see uh, that this is pin one because pin six is ground. And this way I figured out how to count these uh, the pins. And then I will um, test the positive five volt, positive 12, negative uh, 12 and all that kind of stuff while I power this up because yeah, like they said on the note, I expect this one to be defective. I always think that the a first power on is the most funny thing. Um, I mean, if there is any kind of kaboom in these, it will happen at the first, uh, the first minute. So I think this one is main power on, and then I will just turn on Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> there was a little clickety click. That is not good. Definitely. Um, okay, let, let's try and be real quiet and let's see if it goes again. Well, there was a click. It's using 35 watts. It's warming up. But there was a click. Look at that, tons of beam. Holy shit, there is brightness, man. Why are you crazy, man? So focus works. What the heck, it's not responding to any of these. That is not normal. And it is bright as the sun. Oh, it's definitely the blanking, but I've been through every part of the whole blanking system, CRT biasing and all the parts around here, transistors and capacitors and everything that has something to do with this. See, I got all the nice documentations for all this area so I can figure out uh, where to go um, find all the different uh, components. I'll show you the schematic. So here's the schematic of the blanking circuit. We see all those transistors and the, the external blanking input, the internal blanking. And we got some uh, really interesting couplings with all the different transistors that goes uh, 
all the way up to uh, minus 1800 volts and then it goes to uh, cathode and uh, controlled grids uh, for brightness and all that and uh, it actually seems to be working anywhere i measure here i get all the right pulses and i get everything i mean it really seems to be working but the darn thing don't work so i'm just sick and tired of this scope i spent like four full nights <laughs> the more i work with it the more i don't want to give up <laughs> so i mean i just i just give up now it's uh, it's gonna go uh, on the shelf uh, with a little note on it, uh, so for one day, <laughs> I feel like a new challenge is probably going to be uh, this one, I don't know. But that is how it is today. So thank you very much for watching, that will be uh, the end of this uh, video.